Hello students. In the today's session, we are going to discuss about adrenergic drugs. Now, adrenergic drugs are of two types, sympathomimetics and sympatholytics. Now, sympathomimetics are the drugs that mimic the action of adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now, uh, these are the drugs that bind to adrenergic receptors that is alpha and beta receptors and produce actions similar to the action of adrenaline and noradrenaline and therefore they are called as sympathomimetics. Uh, these drugs or sympathomimetics are also termed as adrenergic agonist. Another category of adrenergic drugs are the sympatholytics. Now sympatholytic drugs are those drugs that bind to alpha and or beta receptors and they antagonize the action of adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now uh, we'll be talking about sympathomimetics and we'll be talking about adrenergic agonist. Now based upon their structure, uh, these adrenergic agonists, they are classified as catecholamines and non-catecholamines. Now catecholamines are the adrenergic agonists that possess a catechol ring in the structure. Whereas uh, when we see the molecular structure of uh, non-catecholamines, uh, there is absence of catechol ring, catechol ring is not, presence, not present and therefore uh, these uh, drugs are called as non-catecholamines. Now catecholamines are metabolized by monomine oxidase enzyme and or catechol O-methyl transferase enzyme. Non-catecholamines are uh, metabolized by monomine oxidase enzyme but uh, the metabolism is very slow. Uh, when we talk about oral use, catecholamines are ineffective, whereas uh, non-catecholamines are effective orally. Duration of action of catecholamines is very short, whereas non-catecholamines, uh, their duration of action is long. CNS penetration, that is the central nervous system penetration of catecholamines is poor, whereas uh, uh, central nervous system penetration of non-catecholamines non, uh, is good. Some of the examples of catecholamines are adrenaline, noradrenaline, dobutamine and uh, few examples of non-catecholamines are salbutamol, terbutaline, ephedrine, amphetamine. Adrenergic agonists are of three types. First type of adrenergic agonist are the direct sympathomimetics. These are the drugs uh, which act as agonist on alpha and beta receptors. Uh, that means these drugs they bind to alpha and beta receptors. Uh, they show affinity as well as efficacy. They also produce the pharmacological response. They are the agonist at alpha and beta receptors. For example, adrenaline, noradrenaline, isoprenaline phenylephrine, methoxamine, xylometazoline, salbutamol, etc. Second category of adrenergic agonists are termed as indirect sympathomimetics. Now these indirect sympathomimetics are the drugs that act upon adrenergic neuron and they stimulate the adrenergic neurons to release noradrenaline. Now the noradrenaline that is released uh, that acts upon that binds to alpha and beta receptors and uh, produce the action. For example, tyramine, amphetamine. Then third category of uh, adrenergic agonist are termed as the mixed action sympathomimetics and these are the drugs that uh, uh, act directly that is they bind to alpha and beta receptors to produce their uh, action to produce a pharmacological response as well as they act indirectly that means they also stimulate the adrenergic neuron to release noradrenaline for example aphedrine dopamine mephentermine now we'll talk about adrenergic receptors adrenergic receptors are of two types alpha alpha receptor and beta receptors alpha receptors are further divided into two subcategories alpha 1 receptors and alpha 2 receptors Whereas beta receptors are further divided into three subcategories, beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 receptors. 
This slide shows the pharmacological actions of sympathomimetics, uh, that is the adrenergic agonist. Uh, the prototype drug is the adrenaline. So we'll be talking about the pharmacological actions of adrenaline. Now first is the effect of adrenaline on the heart. On the heart are present the beta 1 receptors. Now uh, adrenaline binds to beta 1 receptors on the heart and it produces cardiac stimulation. And this cardiac stimulation is mediated by uh, the positive inotropic effect that is the adrenaline increases the force of contraction of uh, cardiac muscles uh, which causes increase in the cardiac output. Uh, adrenaline shows positive chronotropic effect that is there is increase in the heart rate and because of increase in the force of contraction of cardiac muscles and increase in the heart rate uh, produced by the adrenaline there is increase in the cardiac output and uh, because of the positive inotropic effect and positive chronotropic effect there is increase in the metabolism of myocardial tissue and there is also increase in the consumption of oxygen by the myocardial tissue because now they are contracting more forcefully and there is also increase in the heart rate. Now a second is the effect of adrenaline on the blood vessels. On the blood vessels uh, are present the alpha 1, alpha 2 and beta 2 receptors. Now it's very important to note over here is this that uh, uh, stimulation of alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors produces vasoconstriction. Whereas stimulation of beta 2 receptors produces vasodilation. Alpha 1 receptors are present on the blood vessels of skin, mucous membrane and renal beds. And adrenaline binds to alpha 1 receptors and produces vasoconstriction. Whereas on the other ha hand, beta 2 receptors are present on the blood vessels of skeletal muscles, liver and coronary blood vessels. And the stimulation of beta 2 receptors results in vasodilation. Now this vasodilation is very important in sympathetic nervous system because uh, whenever sympathetic nervous system is activated, for example, uh, it is activated during the exercise when the body is exerting, when the uh, skeletal muscles are exerting. Uh, the skeletal muscles require more uh, supply of blood uh, when they are exerting. And this increase in the supply of blood is mediated by the dilation of blood vessels which are supplying the skeletal muscles. So uh, there is a dilation of blood vessels which are supplying the skeletal muscles. And then the effect of uh, um, adrenaline on the blood pressure. Adrenaline when administered by intravenous infusion or by the subcutaneous injection it causes increase in the uh, systolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure means uh, that the blood pressure when the heart is contracting and as we have already discussed that uh, uh, adrenaline is uh, responsible for increasing the force of contraction of cardiac muscles and it also increases the heart rate and because of that there is a increase in the systolic blood pressure. Now when we uh, talk about diastolic blood pressure again we have seen that uh, uh, adrenaline it stimulates uh, beta 2 receptors as well as alpha 1 receptors. Stimulation of beta 2 receptors produces vasodilation whereas stimulation of alpha 1 receptors produces uh, vasoconstriction and therefore uh, overall there is slight fall in the peripheral resistance and there is not much change in the diastolic blood pressure. But uh, the mean blood pressure the mean of systolic and diastolic the, uh, the mean blood pressure rises uh, due to the administration of adrenaline. Now respiration on the bronchial smooth muscles are present beta 2 receptors and adrenaline binds to beta 2 receptors and produces the relaxation of uh, smooth muscles of the bronchial tract and which results in bronchodilation. Alpha 1 receptors are present uh, on the smooth muscles of eye and the adrenaline produces medriasis because of the contraction of uh, radial muscles of uh, iris. Alpha and beta 2 receptors are present on the smooth muscles of GIT that is the gastrointestinal intestinal tract and these smooth muscles are relaxed because of the relaxation of smooth muscles of GIT there is a reduction in the peristaltic movements. 
coming to the urinary bladder. Uh, in the urinary bladder are present alpha receptors and beta receptors and uh, uh, stimulation of beta receptors results in the relaxation of detrusor muscles whereas uh, stimulation of alpha receptors results in the uh, constriction of trigon and uh, the overall effect is the reduction in the micturition and that can result in the retention of urine. Now the pharmacological effect of uh, adrenaline on central nervous system. Adrenaline poorly penetrates the brain but uh, uh, it produces uh, restlessness, apprehension and tremors that is involuntary uh, contraction of the muscles. Uh, tremors, tremors can occur and activation of alpha 2 receptors which are found to be present on uh, presynaptic membrane in the brain stem uh, causes reduction in the sympathetic outflow and because of the reduction in sympathetic outflow there is a reduction in the blood pressure and uh, uh, bradycardia. Then metabolic effects of adrenaline. Uh, adrenaline binds to beta 2 receptors in liver and uh, it produces glycogenolysis that is the breakdown of glycogen to produce glucose and because of glycogenolysis there is a breakdown of uh, glycogen there is hyperglycemia uh, adrenaline binds to beta 2 receptors of uh, muscles again it produces glycogenolysis that is a breakdown of glycogen and which results in hyperlact acidemia there is increase in the lactic acid in the blood Adrenaline binds to beta 3 receptors in the adipose tissue and it produces lipolysis that is the breakdown of fats and this causes increase in the free fatty acids in the blood and uh, all these actions that is the effect of adrenaline on beta 2 and beta 3 receptors it leads to calorie genesis. Then adrenaline binds to alpha 2 receptors on the uh, pancreatic beta cells and uh, cause reduction in the production of uh, insulin and reduce production of insulin uh, reduction in the synthesis of uh, or release of insulin causes hyperglycemia uh, adrenaline, adrenaline increases the level of uh, uh, production of glucagon and because of increase in the secretion of glucagon there is again hyperglycemia and this action is mediated by the beta 2 stimulation of beta 2 receptors. Effect of uh, adrenaline on the uterus. Adrenaline can uh, both contract as well as uh, relax the uterus. It contracts and relaxes the smooth muscles of the uterus. Now, at term of pregnancy it uh, relaxes the smooth muscles which causes relaxation of uterus and inhibition of labor whereas it, at uh, all the other times it causes contraction of the smooth muscles of the uterus. So these are all the pharmacological actions of adrenaline. Now coming to the therapeutic uses of sympathomimatics, epinephrine that is uh, adrenaline it is a drug of choice for the treatment of anaphylactic shock. Now anaphylactic shock is uh, caused because of the hypersensitivity and uh, we know that uh, during the anaphylactic shock there is excessive vasodilation and because of excessive vasodilation there is fall in blood pressure and fall in the cardiac output and there is also excessive bronchoconstriction which results in uh, difficulty in breathing. Now adrenaline it is a very potent vasoconstrictor uh, and this uh, uh, action of adrenaline is mediated by the stimulation of alpha 1 receptors which are present on the heart. It increases the blood pressure and uh, thereby uh, since it causes vasoconstriction it also reduces edema. It increases the cardiac output mediated by beta 1 receptors which are present on the heart and uh, it causes uh, uh, bronchodilation and this uh, effect is produced by the stimulation of beta 2 receptors which are present on the smooth muscles of bronchi and since adrenaline uh, 
produces rise in the blood pressure it increases the cardiac output and it also produ produces bronchodilation it is the drug of choice for the treatment of anaphylactic shock and second important uh, sympathomimetic is the dopamine dopamine acts both directly as well as indirectly it produces positive inotropic effect that is increased in the force of contraction of cardiac muscles uh, by stimulating the beta 1 receptors uh, dopamine d1 receptors and by stimulating the release of uh, noradrenaline and uh, because of the positive inotropic effect it produce, produces increase in the blood pressure it causes a dilation of uh, uh, blood vessels uh, that is the renal and mesenteric uh, blood vessels are dilated and this action is mediated by the stimulation of dopamine d1 receptors and because of the dilation of renal and mesenteric blood vessels there is increase in the glomerular filtration rate and there is increase in the urine outflow and uh, uh, therefore it is uh, very useful in the treatment of uh, severe congestive heart failure and dopamine is therefore used in the treatment of CHF and also in the treatment of cardiogenic shock. Another uh, sympathomimetic is uh, oxymetazoline. Oxymetazoline is an alpha 1 agonist. Mm. It uh, is used for the treatment of redness of eye and since it is a alpha 1 agonist it causes vasoconstriction it uh, causes the uh, it uh, produces vasoconstriction uh, of the blood vessels uh, found to be present in the nose and uh, therefore it is also used as a nasal decongestant Another sympathomimetic is the phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is an alpha 1 agonist. Uh, it causes vasoconstriction. And since it produces vasoconstriction, uh, it causes increase in the peripheral resistance and it increases diastolic blood pressure as well as systolic blood pressure. And therefore, it is useful in the treatment of hypotension. And uh, since it causes a constriction of blood vessels of the nose, it is also used as a uh, nasal decongestant. It is used in the treatment of nasal congestion. Another, sim another sympathomimetic is dobutamine. Dobutamine is a selective beta 1 agonist. Uh, it uh, binds to the beta 1 receptors which are present on the heart and produces positive inotropic effect. That means it, means it increases the force of contraction of cardiac muscles. And because of which there is increase in the cardiac output and hence it is useful in the treatment of congestive heart failure. Another important uh, sympathomimetic is salbutamol. Salbutamol is a selective beta 2 agonist. It causes bronchodilation and therefore it is used as a short acting bronchodilator. Another uh, sympathomimetic is uh, formoterol. Formoterol is also a selective beta 2 agonist. It also produces bronchodilation. And it is used as a long acting bronchodilator. Uh, terbul terbutaline is another sympathomimetic. It is also a selective beta 2 agonist. It produces bronchodilation and it is used as a short acting bronchodilator. Another sympathomimetic is uh, Mirabigron. Uh, it is a selective beta 2 agonist. It causes relaxation of detrusor muscles of uh, urinary bladder. And because it relaxes the uh, detrusor muscles of urinary tract, uh, it is used for the treatment of overactive bladder. Overactive bladder is a bladder where uh, uh, the, there is increase in the frequency of micturation. Uh, so it is used in the treatment of overactive bladder. Uh, another sympathomimetic is pseudophedrine. Uh, it is a vasoconstrictor. Uh, specifically, uh, it constricts the blood vessels of nose. It reduces uh, inflammation in the nasal passages and therefore it is used as a nasal decongestant. So these are the sympathomimetics uh, uh, with the important therapeutic uses.